gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something? Chris? The Herons are back. Well, actually, Chris isn't here yet. But, oh, there he is. Almost on time. Mr. KBD, how are you doing, sir? Dude, it was a tie. I mean, it wasn't bad, right? Was it as bad as uh, as people are making it out to be? It wasn't that bad. Uh, I, I think it was very underwhelming. I think it was very disappointing. I think we should we have won. Like I thought the, opp the opportunities were there. I think that that's going to bring a lot of doubt going into the game against Monterrey. I think there's just a lot of reasons to be unhappy. So I, I don't blame everybody for feeling down on today because um, I think that it, it was it was an underwhelming um, result because I felt like the performance wasn't that bad. I thought that they had a lot of opportunities. I thought Luis Suarez played a good game. I felt like for everybody that says that he doesn't do a lot of creating, I think that they haven't watched him play closely. The runs, even the dummy passes that he does, I, I think that he is he is creating for everyone. Um, but unfortunately, the goals didn't go in. I thought I thought that it was good. And everybody and, missed you, Danny. Thank you, thank you. Um, for anybody that was watching last Monday, I left halfway through the episode. Something came up. I've been dealing with that all week. Um, but things are so far better. So I'm back. And, um, and yeah, and that's that's phenomenal, dude. I, it's awesome yeah. to see you back. Awesome to be able to have you on the screen next to me. And you held it your, down. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was fun. I even held it down in Spanish, almost tripped over myself, but I made it happen. And um, I have a reveal. I have a reveal. I don't know if I should wait till the end of the show for it. It's about the wall. Should I reveal that now or wait until the end? I go for it. And then I have a question about somebody that keeps bringing up the yellow lot. I think somebody saw me eating an arepa in the yellow lot, but go for it. What, let me see the wall. I'm, I'm like, are, are you. So, so it's, it's not, not a white wall behind you right now? It is a white wall. It's it's still the same. But, guys, I'm building, okay? Ooh, I'm building. I got, I, I got a little something-something in the mail, guys. So it's, it's, it's coming together. This is going to be somewhere up here at some point. So I got a couple other things coming into the, to the mailboxes. So be on the lookout. Well, I um, I I guess l l let's get into the game. Well, no, you know, before I get into the game, for those of you that have never been out to Chase Stadium, formerly Drive Pink Stadium, I hadn't been there in in a month. The last time I went was for the five zero game against Orlando. Um, and um, and yes, Dennis, yes, I I was there. I was eating an arepa, and I was also eating churros during halftime. And now that's what I wanted to get to. I don't know if the last time you went, Chris, they, they had the same setup, but now where they have the yellow no. lot little fan fest, They've it's now part of the today. stadium. They debuted yeah. it today. Yeah. That's really cool because yes. you show your ticket before you walk in there, but the awesome part about that is that now you can walk into the stadium and then walk back out to that area. So at halftime, my wife and I went back. We went to go to a Colombian food truck, but they ran out of the food that we wanted. So we went over to the churros a food truck and we had churros just sat down on the table and had churros at halftime. Very cool that they added that because it brings all the food trucks out to that area, which kind of opens up the inside of the stadium walkways. Uh, very nice touch. I thought that was really cool. So for those of you that have never been to the stadium, uh, that, that's a very nice touch. The food trucks are now there in the yellow lot area. And um, that, that was really cool. I like that. And it's a shame soccer daddy that you missed the whole game. It was a draw. So you didn't miss much. If you want to watch the game, just watch the first half. Don't even watch the second half. Okay. Um, I'd say, uh huh. I was going to say, uh, it did have food. At halftime, it had run out of the, le they, they call it the lechona. And uh, that's the meal that my wife went to get. And it had run out of that specific order. And we, that's what she went for. So uh, they didn't run out of food altogether. So I, I know that I got an email earlier this week that they debuted this setup for this game so this was the first game where they legitimately closed off the fan zone and you have to go in with your ticket and I somebody it. yeah somebody had mentioned that to me now i also heard that you can't play soccer out there so that kind of sucks when i go with my son i typically play soccer with him on the outside so i don't know if that's the same that you can't really play soccer out there anymore 
Um, and then also, if you really think about it, they probably did it because of all the people selling merch outside of the stadium. Well, they still do it by the cars, but yeah, they, they eliminated that. After the game, there's nobody out there anymore. Exactly, because you know before you'd leave through the through the gate one, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you run into people selling messy hats, messy soap bars, messy dispensers, messy toilet paper, like anything with Messi's face or name on it was getting sold right outside the gate, legitimately right outside. So, yeah. but it was a very nice setup. Uh, kudos to whoever thought that up because I thought it was a great job and uh, it, it makes the stadium feel a little bigger because now you have a whole nother area that you yes. can walk through during the games, before the games and after the game. So that was really cool. Um, I don't think there's anything else to touch on out off the pitch. Oh, actually one more thing uh, for those of you that are old school into Miami fans that miss, like watching the players like walk into the stadium and stuff. It was interesting. I went to get coffee before the game started. And as I'm there, I'm there with my cousin and his son. And his son points out Freire. And Freire is just walking through everybody, like right there, right by the Bustelo stand. And then I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I turn around and then my cousin's son again says, oh, man, that's Kremaki. And there he was. And there's Freire and Kremaki just walking by. Uh, my, he ran up to him. He took pictures with him. And then Redondo shows up. And Redondo is there taking pictures with everybody. Now, Redondo looked like he, I mean, obviously, he just got injured. So he was limping pretty, pretty rough. But um, that was that was interesting. It was cool to see them just walking by there. And then a couple minutes later, I- Izzy Boatwright and, and, and Hall both walked by. Those didn't, unfortunately, get any attention because I guess they're a little more unknown. So they walked by everybody unknown um but yeah that, that was pretty cool to see everybody it kind of felt like a little old school the way they were just walking through uh through the stand through the the fan zone i guess to get to the media area that's really cool i mean that's that's something that i think is not just cool like in terms of like the old school perspective but i think it's really cool because it, it sort of helps you embrace the team more not just like embrace this messy figure like at this point like my daughter legitimately thinks that messy is a hologram so why because like he plays whenever he wants then he doesn't want to play and then when he plays he's a god and she's like this guy Messi doesn't really I exist think, he's not a real person i think he plays when he's healthy I, yeah I, I i think he look we we wondered if it was true that he plays like when he plays he wants to play 90 everything i've seen is true when he can play he plays so yes. I'm not going to doubt him playing. Uh, I think that he does play as much as he can when he can. And I think that today, maybe if this was an – I am almost 100% sure that if this was an important type of game, he would have played. But because the important game is on Wednesday, they saved him for Wednesday, which is the smart move. So um, I, I, I think that that was a smart move, and I'm glad that they did it that way. I sent you the starting 11. I don't I know it. if you saved the starting 11, but I tried to upload it, and it's not letting me. I got it. I'll, I'll, it'll um, be right up. But I'll tell you this much. I love that that you guys ran into those players. I wish that you guys would have ran into Ian Frey because I'd like to know what the hell's going on with him and his life. I want to know what's going on with Ben Krem because those are two players that I want to see back on the field immediately. So that's something that I, I anticipate on seeing. And, um, well, and the I game thought Ben was, Krem was going to be available today. So did I, which was surprising that he wasn't available today. So, yeah. and Yuki is saying Messi is Messi. I guess there's no other there's no other way to put it. And you know what? Walter Torres is saying Redondo was missed today. Yes, he was definitely missed. Of course, we need a speedy recovery out of him. Now, the question I have is, does anybody know if he got injured during practice? Was it in the last game? Because to be honest, I don't know when he ended up getting injured. Uh yeah, and uh yeah is asking was Redondo injured, and I'll answer it with your name, likeliness. Yeah. Uh he injured his LCL, I believe, which yeah. is uh an eight week supposedly injury, like like Jose said, two months, eight weeks. If it would have been the ACL, it would have been likely eight months. So uh yeah. luckily it's just the LCL. Uh like I said, he was limping pretty heavy, but Again, it was just a, it just happened a couple of days ago, so it makes yeah. sense that he 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 looked pretty uh, worse for wear when he was walking around. And uh, the the lineup is there whenever you want it, Chris. 
Yeah, I mean, we can just start off with the lineup like always. Uh, well, I mean, I guess looking at the lineup, like this was a disaster, Did right? You think like so? the, that, like when you look at this lineup, right? And and mm -hmm. you guys in the chat, tell us what you guys think. But like when you saw this lineup here, there's no way you thought anything positive. There's no way, right? I, I mean, you I see, thought Busquets, the, I you thought, see mm -hmm. I, I, let me explain something real quick. Gressel's our new Messi. Ruiz is our new Busquets. And Busquets is our new Noah Allen. Well, there's a couple of things that 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 I thought were odd. The Busquets starting at center back, I thought that was odd. But when I thought that it was only Sailor and Noah Allen as the options, I I thought okay, I guess I'm not a fan of it. But maybe he doesn't trust Ryan Sailor and Noah Allen beating the press. So Busquets being that center back that could maybe beat the press, I was like, I'm not a fan of it. But seeing as how thin we are, okay, let, let's try it out. I wasn't, but what I thought was really weird was the fact that Thomas Avilis was apparently available and he played in the second half. So if he was available, why the hell was Busquets starting at center back? That's when I started questioning it. I didn't see the lineup before the game. Um, yeah. I, I was busy and I just I didn't see it. So I wasn't aware that Avilis was on the bench. So I was really taken aback when he came into the game. And once he came to the game, then Busquets moved into the midfield. And I was like, what the hell was the point of this? Like, that completely threw me off. I want to mention something because Dennis mentioned a comment here. I don't trust Sailor either. Listen, Sailor played a good game. I think Sailor played a good game. Mm. I didn't see him make any sort of big, any big bad errors. He came back on defense. He distributed the ball well when it was getting, when they were getting pressed, he'd kick it back to calendar. He played exactly how he was supposed to how he was supposed to play. Now you're mentioning Aviles, and remember it was it was mentioned that he was injured. So I imagine that they said, "Well," and it, exactly what happened is exactly what I thought that they would take out Bright, move Busquets up in his place, and then bring Aviles in for like 20, 30 minutes, which is exactly what happened. Well, can so, I can I ask you a question because you were watching it on TV? Sure. So maybe you had a be better view because from our seats, I, I can analyze the game much better when I watch it on TV because yeah. I'm sure like that's why they put reporters up in the, the media box up top because you get a yeah. better view of the whole field. From where I was in the second half, at least to me, it looked like they were playing with five in the back. It looked like Wagon was a was a right center back. It looked like David Ruiz was playing right wing back. And it looked like Busquets and Sailor were also center backs. That's what it looked like to me in the second half. It looked like it was Alba, Busquets, Sailor, Wagon, and then David Ruiz. Now, I don't know if that's how you saw it on TV. I, I kept trying to stare and, and see if that's what they were doing. And to me, it looked like they were lined up that way before Busquets got moved up to the uh, to the midfield and Aviles came in. So uh, before that substitution, it looked to me like that's how they were playing. I don't know if you saw it the same way. To me, it didn't look that way. It didn't look okay. like Ruiz was coming back to play like a right wing back or anything like that. What it looked like is it basically looked like he was sort of trying to, I guess, help or make up for people getting beat on defense because at the end of the game, we were getting countered pretty efficiently. Um, but no, I didn't see that towards the end of the game. Uh, okay. And then we have, we have a couple people here. We have Tariq mentioning... Thank you for the super slam, buddy. Uh, it's uh, saying, sorry for being late. What a disappointment. Suarez, yeah, yeah Suarez should have had six goals. Uh, I don't want to say it's should a have fraction. won that game. Yes. I don't want to say it's a fraction of how good they can be when Messi is playing uh, Tariq. But I do agree with you that Suarez should you have had You don't think if Messi goals. plays today that they win? I mean, I if think Messi that Messi would We kick their ass. Yeah, we destroy. No, for sure we destroy them. But I don't want to say it's a fraction. Like when you say it's a fraction of how good they play, like that makes it seem like very minuscule amount of of opportunity for us to play play good. Um, but let's go over this starting lineup. What did you think when you when you saw it at least premiere at the stadium? Because if you didn't get a chance to see it before, I mean, Twitter was on fire when they saw Busquets playing center back. Well, they, it, I didn't see it. Down. Yeah, I didn't see it. But um, 
my brother is the one that told me that Busquets is playing center back, which I thought was really weird. Again, I didn't, I didn't like see it on my phone. Yeah, I was yeah, talking yeah, yeah. to him, and I assumed that Kremaki was on the bench until I saw him walk by. Um, I just, I, I thought that Aviles wasn't playing. Uh, but overall, when I saw them out there, nothing really shocked me. I guess outside of the fact that obviously Busquets was playing center back, and yeah. um, no, I mean I expected a four three three, like I said, but I felt like. Like, Wagon was playing almost like a center back. I felt like he was a third center back. To, to me, that's what it looked like for a lot of the game. So, I don't, I don't know. Now, this one thing that, that did stand out to Wagon to me was that he was faster than I thought. Yes, he There is. was a couple runs that he made. And I, and I remember because I, I remember think he, get it. The, first, the first thing that I thought was when you brought up that FIFA card, and you're like, this guy has no pace. When I saw him, I was like, this kid, he's I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say he's a stud yet, but, I mean, he looked quicker than I expected. So, all right, look, and AZ Rebellion is already calling him a stud. Now, I don't know if I'm going to go stud because quite yet, but as far as pace goes, I thought that he looked good. I, I saw him win a ball down the right uh, touch line, yes. and then he bucked it down, uh, and pushed the ball up really fast. So, I, I thought that that was good. Um, go ahead. I, lo I loved how Bright played. I loved how Bright played. I thought that he played for. I think that his touch is phenomenal. I think that Bright, his touch is phenomenal. Uh, Peaches is saying Cello is a potential stud. So not a stud yet, but a potential stud. Dennis likes him. He was running his ass off. Dennis, Dennis, that's Dennis. Diego Gomez was good today. Diego Gomez was good today, right, Dennis? I mean, come on. That yeah, Diego Gomez, Gomez was good today. He also had a couple opportunities that he that he didn't. Yeah, but you know what? Uh, like I said, he's showing like better offensive awareness, better offensive play, dude. You give me that plus that intensity on defense, I'll take that every day of the week. And look, Dennis, he's he's eating crow with me, Dennis. We got to bro, AZ Rebellion also. So looking at this starting lineup, right? So I, I'll say it out for the people that are listening on audio. We have Taylor playing left wing, Gressel playing right wing, Suarez up top. You have Diego Gomez playing left mid. Ruiz really playing right mid, even though it's displayed here as, as the center mid. But Bright was really the center mid. And then you have Alba playing left back. Uh, Wagon playing right back. And then Busquets and Sailor filling out your center back positions with Calendar in between the pipes. So you don't think that David Ruiz was playing? Uh, I can't wait to watch the game back. I need to see this. I felt like he was playing the right wing back spot, man. I no, man. Did. In the first half, absolutely not. Um, in the second half, I didn't see him much go back there. I think I saw him go back there maybe within the last 10, 15 minutes. But it wasn't like, I don't think it was to be in that assignment. I think that he just went back there because of the need, because of the okay. shifting that the center backs had to do. Uh, I don't want to get off topic from the game. Just, but just I, want, I see a lot of people bringing up Neymar right now. I just want to say I don't think Neymar was at this game. But for those of you saying that Neymar might be here this summer, Neymar is not coming till next year. Don't even like don't. It's not happening. He has he signed a huge contract in Saudi Arabia and he played like a handful of games. Like he hasn't played enough with them to just bounce. He's gonna play some more time with Saudi Arabia whenever he gets healthy. I do think he'll be here next summer in 2025. But don't even – don't think that, oh, he's going to be here for the Leagues Cup run this year. He's not coming this year. He, I think he'll come next year, but absolutely not this year. Now, One World, One Goal is mentioning something a little okay. different than I am, saying the second half he did go back there a lot. I mean, And that's so when – and that's when, and for my seats, at that point, our team is scoring towards the other end. So that's when Correct. I get to focus in more on the back line. So that's when yeah. I started noticing it because, obviously, we're, we're right behind the goal. So that's when I started looking at our back line. I was like, man, David Ruiz looks yeah. like he's playing the right wing back. So I don't know about the first half, but the second half, that's what I thought. Well, I mean, you're going to have to watch it back, but I didn't I see him playing much right wing back. But, like, what do you think about this starting lineup? Seeing people out of position like Busquets, we got Wagon making his debut. We have people like uh, Negri still on the bench. People like Campana still on the bench. You got Aviles on the bench. I mean, what did you think about this? We were working kind of with bare minimum, too. Uh, I don't know. I think that there was uh, Campana should have gotten on. 
Uh, is he injured still? I, I don't know. I mean, he's when is he? I don't know. I don't want to say well, when is he not injured because he's typically right. injured, but like well, something's got to be going I, on. If, with he, him. if he was healthy enough, I would have liked to see him and Suarez up top uh, and take, I don't know, take Taylor out or Gressel out. And, uh, and just have those two guys up top uh, and, and see if they can create some magic the last 10, 15 minutes of the game. That, that's what I would have liked because you felt like you were getting opportunities consistently. I think if they would have had two finishers up top. I, I, look, I felt like Suarez was creating a lot of chances for others. I felt like he was dropping dimes for other people. Like I said, some of those dummy passes that oh, he was nice. leaving off for other people. I, I felt like there were opportunities there. And I think that maybe him and Campana might have been able to pull some magic off the last 15 minutes. When I saw that they put nine extra minutes at the end of the game, I was like, oh, we're fucking, we're, we're winning this game. I was convinced. I was like, yeah. we're going to win this game. Nine minutes, we're going to score. And we didn't, obviously, but I, I was confident. Now, I will tell you, I, I've looked at several websites to see what the, the grades are, right? Because you know how they, they grade players and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. about all of them. For just about all of them, if if it's not the top, it's the second, is Matt Freeze. If he's not the top-rated player, he's the second-rated player. So it's, it's either Luis Suarez or Matt Freeze in most websites. Matt Freeze being the goalie for NYCFC. If that guy doesn't have a great game, Inter Miami wins. So. Oh, yeah. And Walter Torres is mentioning, I like the energy from Casas and Alfonso when they came in. Absolutely. That's I like Alfonso. In a row. Yeah, that's two games I like Alfonso. I like Alfonso. Yep. Yeah, I like I, Alfonso. I like Casa again. Casa, he didn't really stand out much to me, but Alfonso, hey, he's looking, he's looking kind of sexy right now. He's looking kind of sexy right now. So starting eleven, here it is. Read it and weep, guys. I'm pretty sure a lot of you were pulling all kinds of hair looking at this starting lineup right here, and I didn't like it so much. But then we start the game right mm -hmm. now, starting the game, and I think. And Alejandro thinks that my white wall is, is giving us bad luck. Listen, Alejandro, <laughs> I'm telling you, brick by brick, brick by brick, we're going to build this thing, guys. We're going to build this thing back here, brick by brick, Alejandro. I promise you. Okay. Uh, I saw somebody in, in the chats asked, Cello looked good, right? And I can't find your comment, so I'm just going to answer it. I thought that he looked okay, yeah. Uh, so I, I thought he looked okay. I don't yeah, want to say great. I thought great. he did very well. I, I, I thought, thought he, he did, did well. well. The thing is, I, I don't, I don't know where the hell he was playing. That's what I was telling you. I think, I, I think that he was playing center back for some of the game. So I, with that taken into consideration, I think he did well. But yeah. I want to mention I have high something hopes for him. Mm -hmm. I want to mention something because everybody is focused on Messi being there or not being there. This is one person that I want to tell everyone right now that is critical to how we play today along with Diego Gomez. Diego Gomez and David Ruiz, those two guys right there, those two guys, to me, are the reason that we saw a lot of cohesiveness, not just offensively, but defensively. Uh, David Ruiz, uh, he played well. Uh, I saw once or twice that Luis Suarez was giving him an earful. And, you know, Luis Suarez is very demonstrative. Yeah, so it's I, about I being know, in I, positions. I don't know if they caught that on on TV or not, but there was once or twice that he was he was being he was giving Luis Suarez and uh, Luis Suarez Luis Suarez was giving David Ruiz uh, an earful. So, he also did the same thing, I think, with Taylor at one point. Mm -hmm. He also was giving the business to someone else. He's a very if you watch Luis Suarez very closely, like he's a very exaggerated human. Like, he's exaggerating his arms all over the place. He's, like, you can read all of his emotions all over every crevice mm -hmm. of his face. So, like, that's one guy that if you just stare at for a couple minutes, you're going to know what the hell is going on in his mind. So, and here we have uh, Taiman, Taiman and is mentioning Spicy Suarez. So I love Spicy Suarez. Me and my wife are talking yeah. about making a Spicy Suarez shirt. Um <laughs> I, I don't want to jump. I know, I know you go in chronological order. So I don't want to. Yeah, no, we, we can jump I, I all over. We can do it. I know. And, and I'm not going to. But what I did want to bring up, because I don't want to forget. One thing that I liked that Inter Miami was doing early in the game was pressing. Yeah. NYCFC is trash. So what do you do to a trash team? You press them. You force them into mm -hmm. mistakes. And the first 20, 30 minutes, they were doing that. And I loved it. Luis Suarez running his ass off. Diego Gomez can press. 
I, I think that I thought they were doing a good job turning the ball over, creating chances. I felt like yeah. we were like when we scored that first one, and I saw the way we were pressing them and forcing them into bad bad decisions. I was like, man, we're gonna fucking kill this team. And that's what I really felt. And then things kind of just we just started letting them hold the possession, let them bring the ball up a little more. Like it, 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 I don't know, maybe we can't do the Red Bulls thing. We can't keep that pace up. I guess the whole game. It would have been nice if we'd have gotten two out of that because. I'll tell you, we were on top of them the first 30 minutes of the game. It, yes. it was awesome. But when you only convert one and then you can't keep that up, all of a sudden they start breaking you down. Well, one of the things that happens is that, and I noticed with, especially with Diego Gomez, is that they must have like a, a recruiting sheet for him. I'm not a recruiting sheet, but like a, like a scouting sheet where whoever has the ball around him, they're like, just get rid of it. Get it out of your feet. Give it to someone else that's not around uh diego gomez so and i i agree steve uh they're, they're not meant to to press all game it, it's very risky and that's why i was surprised do it, Alejandro. Uh, i was surprised that they did it but it was working that's why if you're gonna do it you better cash out at least one or two goals because you're not gonna be able to do it all game and you're leaving yourself susceptible to the counter and um like, they couldn't do it all game. They did it for the first 20, 30 minutes. Unfortunately, they only got one goal yeah. out of it, and things changed a lot once NYCFC started having possession of the ball and creating opportunities and whatnot. But those first 20, 30 minutes, they, they needed to get two goals out of that thing. That would have been the difference. Oh, it would have been a hell of a difference. Are you kidding me? And then Luis Suarez already to be able to put at least two goals contribution in the first, what, 25 minutes? Like, I mean, the, uh, look, look at the way that he played, the positions that he was in in order to score. Anybody that tells me he's not going to be the, the golden boot this year is smoking crack. Uh, is, he's tied with Lewis Morgan right now, isn't he? Yeah, but come on, come on. Come I'm not on. saying that Lewis Morgan's going to do more. I'm, Lewis I'm Morgan had a hat trick fact. against us. That's it. I'm, I'm just stating the fact that he is tied. I mean, yes, yeah, you can state saying. facts. It's like, what, we played like two and a half games already, all right? Like at the end of the day, he's We've gonna also walk played away one more game than everybody else. Yes, I get it. He's gonna walk away the golden boot winner. And if you limp don't away. think the same, yeah, he's gonna limp away. And if you don't think the same, you're probably smoking crack. So actually, Jose just said Morgan scored today, so he has one more goal than Luis Suarez. Oh my god, Jose, come on, man. You're a party <laughs> pooper, man. You're a party Look, I, pooper. I, I think Luis Suarez has a really good chance of doing that also. So All he right, does. Chris. So you want to get into the golds? So, well, with the goal, first of all, I want to get into this one play because I didn't write down the details of the goal. And the goal happened actually right in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. The header? It uh -huh. was, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a cross. That, let me tell you, Gressel's crosses today were super duper on point. Super on point. I thought that I thought that his crosses were great. Peaches is uh, chiming in into the chat. NYC played well today. They put ten men behind the ball, and every attack in Inter Miami were too slow, mostly allowing them to get into position. Or maybe and they that just happened. Didn't... That happened after uh -huh. the first thirty minutes. And look, NYC FC started dominating the ball after the first 20, 30 minutes. I don't know exactly yeah. at what point it, it started changing, but. If you look, just watch back that game for the first 20, 25 minutes, and you'll see it. Inter Miami was dominating the ball, uh, forcing turnovers. It, it, it just it just looked like like we were just going to run away with this game. And, um, you know, it changed well, quickly. And, I, and, and I, I think it goes back to what you're saying, where we're just not like the Red Bulls, right? Where we'll press, but we don't have the scheme or I guess the full roster in order to do the same sort of press that the rebels do or as consistent as they do well we don't inject red bull into our veins like they do yes which is so, crack yes basically so, that's what it is they crack themselves out yeah so dennis lopez is saying we came out aggressive which is correct they did come out the box aggressive oh and actually i wanted to bring this up unlucky game today ref was was uh bad called stop luis attack I, I want to address this to everybody that said the that, the re, that the re, no that the replacement refs are horrible. Yeah, I'm sorry, all referees are horrible. Mm -hmm. And I know Solana gets a lot of crap Cheers. because I, Solana has been has been fighting this fight 
on Twitter. I've seen him fight this fight where people are going to complain about the real refs like they did about the replacement refs. That shit don't change. I'm sorry. Replacement right or not, you're not going to like the refs. They're always going to make yeah. bad calls. You could say that there some of them are more worse than with the replacement refs. I, I didn't see the difference. If so, I forgot that they were the official refs. It wasn't it wasn't until my wife asked me if the official refs were playing or, or refing today that I remembered that they had finally figured things out a couple of days ago. It's all the same to me. I don't think anything changed. Well, the broadcast didn't didn't uh, forget to remind all the viewers that they had just signed their contract and that now we have the real referees in house. Okay. And one world one goal chiming in with the fact of the night. The refs have been bad since 1996. Fact of Rooney's. This was just awful. Mm -hmm. Skyler, R, 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 Skyler R is mentioning no cards on wasting time and stoppage times. Mm -hmm. That was completely awful. And I agree, Skrillet. If refs are going to make mistakes, I'm not killing the refs. I'm killing the people that were killing the replacement refs and are saying that it's going to be a huge difference when the regular refs come in. Look, they're all going to make mistakes. It's a, That's like yeah. the worst job. To, I don't know why anybody would want to be a ref. That's like the worst job you could possibly have. I, it is, but like, I mean, it's cool though because you're on the same field with all of these athletes and stuff. You think they you're get getting autograph stuff? Absolutely not. And you get bitched at by those athletes. It's I know like was a ref. They don't, it's not like they like you. They hate you. If I was a ref, I'd probably try to get some. I mean, what? I can't yeah. get autograph. Well, I mean, I guess your, it would your show career wouldn't leniency. last long. Yeah, your why your not? I mean, not I, so if I work at Publix, I can't eat Publix subs. Do you really think that's the same thing? Did you really just try to make that analogy? Kind of. Oh, my God. Go, go to the first goal. Oh, no, you were talking about the first goal. Yeah, it was. It was a beautiful cross by Gressel, which I didn't even think. What Was that the one that, that Gressel crossed where he headed yes. it in? Yes. And that, that I didn't think it was going to get there on time, and it was amazing. Beautiful that, header. Uh-huh. Oh, I was going to say, right before that goal, there was this um, this young guy that came in. I was going to say kid, but he's a young guy. He's probably in his early 20s. He walks up the steps, and he looks so excited when he sees that pitch. And I think it's so awesome when people look that excited to see a pitch. And he gave his girlfriend like a big hug and kiss. I guess maybe it was like a gift or something. And he looked like he was a big Luis Suarez fan because he started like yelling Luis Suarez's his name. And he was so hyped. Like, you could see the happiness in his face. Just a random detail that absolutely nobody listening to cares about. But it stood out to me. I really thought that was a cool moment. And then he started, like, watching the game from down there. And the people were like, no, you got to go back to your seat. And he, he ended up going back to his seat. And, like, 30, 40 seconds later, Luis Suarez scores that goal. I felt so bad, man, because he would have had quite the experience if he would have seen it up close. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's always so cool to, to see people that happy when they go out and see the picture up close and stuff. It's, uh, it happens in front of our seats all the time. Yeah, man. We're lucky. We're, we're very lucky. One that we get to see Luis Suarez and Messi all the time and up close, right? Because we, we sit pretty close to the pitch, so we've seen them up close quite a bit of times. And then when you see the way other people act when they see the pitch and they see Messi up by the, the midfield line and they get so excited, it's like – and it's really cool. We're really lucky that uh, that we have these – these uh, all-time players playing for us right now. Random thought, I know. I just threw it off, off the show. But it's something that I just remembered, and I thought it was really cool because that kid looked really excited. And I was really, uh, oddly enough, I don't know him, but I was really happy for him because it looked like he was really happy to be there. And then his boy, Luis Suarez, scored right after. It just sucked that he, got to, he missed it. Well, and I want to mention this because uh, now that we're still off topic, One World One Goal is asking if we tried the new Inter-Miami pub sub. I actually tried it before, and it's really good. You know what, Danny? I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna take some time and I'm gonna I'm gonna what is that? I'm gonna do like a review of the of the sandwich. We should do I, that. Well, I don't do subs, I do raps. I mean, you're fucking <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? What yeah, do keep we it PG. Do? I know where that was going. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I do I do public's raps. I, I like the raps better than I like the subs. Give me a spinach rap. All right. So, um, so Luis Suarez scored that goal. I'm gonna talk anymore. I, that was uh, 15 in the 15th minute. He scores that goal. I'm not gonna lie to you. I immediately thought we were gonna game kick over. Their ass. I was yeah. like, oh, that's it. So we came out aggressive. We're getting chance after chance. I was like, we're gonna put three, three, four goals up today. I, I really genuinely felt that way. I was really surprised the way 
the game played out after that. But I was very confident. I really thought we were going to win easily after that first goal and the way that the game was being played. Um, but, you know, things kind of took a, a turn. And um, NYCFC started possessing the ball more. Now, I wanted you to tell me because they didn't show the replay. And because I drove home, I haven't had a chance because I, I drove home and I jumped on here immediately because we were running late. So I haven't had a chance to see the, the goal that NYCFC scored on my phone or TV or anything. I did see that some people were blaming Drake. Now, from what I remember, Drake got the ball. He passed it out to his left to Jordi Alba. But Jordi Alba ran into, I want to say it was Busquets. And they both went in to, for the ball. They collided with each other. The ball got loose. Got into the foot of an NYCFC player. He passed. He progressed the ball up, maybe passed to somebody, and they hit a shot from like right outside the box or or near the top of the box, and they scored like a missile goal. That's what I remember. Now, if you could please tell me, was that Drake's fault? Because I don't see how that could possibly be Drake's fault. But that's what some people were saying. So I'm kind of curious as to what you have to say. So I just sent you a video because I recorded that goal. And I want everybody to go back and, and watch it. And it wasn't Jordi Alba. It was right here. Busquets was at fault. Busquets was the one that was at fault for that play. Now, I don't know if you have the chance to edit that video. Maybe take away like the, the last two seconds. Cause, but other than that, just send it. Just see if you can upload it. Because I recorded it from the moment that it happened. Because you could see that it was Busquets that did a very terrible pass, gave up the ball, and then obviously so you he's want not me to be put able to this recover. up because th this is horrible. You you don't see the play. What do you mean? I you, you do see the play. No, you don't. No, yes, you do. Okay, we this is horrible podcasting, by the way, Chris. We can't just debate yes, with yes or no. So so here it is. I'm gonna put it for everybody here, right? So there's the ball. You see so him. Right, so you don't you don't see Hold the error that you're talking about. Well, yeah, you do, and then you see him; he's taking ownership. Okay, see. Hold on. Uh, the, the video's over. Yeah, the video's over. You're right. <laughs> Fuck you. So, but it's important to see that Busquets is the one that took ownership for it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. But okay. he is the one that took ownership for the for the for the bad pass. Yeah, because I recorded it sort of like at the end of the the whole play, yeah. where he ended up giving the ball up, right? And then so once he gave the ball up, you'll see right there, he's like, "I got it. It's my bad." So, I mean, it's true. I mean, I guess Drake could have done a better job of positioning himself, but not, I I don't see how that is um how that's Drake's fault. Uh, he was one on one. It's hard. Marasovic is mentioning it went in on the near post, so maybe that's why. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got you got to force him to beat you wide, I guess. But still, that was one on one. It's not, it's, it's rough. I think that you would say that that's more on Busquets or Alba for for coughing the ball up, and a lot of people are saying it's Busquets' fault. Look, Busquets playing a new position. I don't know if he's ever played center back. I don't know if that has anything to do with the fact that he was all the way out there trying to get get that ball, but um. Look, at that point, I thought it sucked that we had let up a goal. Uh, you could tell that two players bumped into each other. I, I didn't know that it was Busquets initially. But I wouldn't blame that on Drake. But even then, 1-1, one, one, I still thought that we would come out on top. Well, I mean, look, you, when, you, when you have a turnover like that, whether it's Busquets or anybody else, like it's going to happen. So he gave up the ball, unfortunately. Look, Busquets is probably playing from a position that he, he rarely ever plays in. He knows the, the sort of dynamic or the sort of players that are around him from his spot. And so it just so happened that he's, look, he's trying to make a play and unfortunately just made a, a terrible pass that just turned over and we got caught with our pants down. That's, that's what happened. He yeah. made the bad pass and we just had less defenders against the offenders, the offensive players, and we got scored on. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to blame that on the goalie. The goalie's making a little, literally a a, a, a split hair decision. So. Uh, and, and I'm with Vice City Lucas. I mean, I, I I think most people agree with you. Everybody thought that he was too slow to play center back, and that 
we might get beat on the counter. But with that being said, we didn't end up getting really beat on the counter. We so, did it. at the end of the game. At the end of the game, it looked like they were going to destroy us on the counters. Mm -hmm. But I think it's at that point that we were just getting gassed. Well, no, I, and, I, thought, I thought that we were going for a goal also. Which also starts to, you know, I, I start to wonder, Negri's been on the bench the last two games. What's going on with Negri? Is he going to come back? I guess like, he's Is ready. he going to play at any point? I mean, because I'm if, sure, sure he will, but he's not ready yet. He played two. He he played a, a game with IMCF two. Mm -hmm. and he was on the bench for two games. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's like it, I thought you got to give him some playing time if you're trying to ship him off. Because what yeah. are we doing? You're just taking a, a space a, a a space up on on the bench. And Dennis is mentioning that Drake actually had a pretty a, a few great saves tonight, including the one at the 90th minute and the post. I believe in the first in the first uh in the first half second half in the second half mm -hmm. saved also was... a potential goal against yep so it could have been 2-1 even yeah. though we could have scored five goals today well uh when you look at the overall stats we had 16 total shots six six shots on target yeah. and I know a lot of people don't like the xg expected goals but if yeah, you go with that helpful. I know uh we were expected goals for us 2.48 for NYCFC 1.23. Um, you know, we had seven corners. We, I, I, like, statistically, we had a much better game. I thought Look overall we play. looked better. Look at that saucy play by Jordi Alba. Saucy play by Jordi Alba. Great production, guys. <laughs> I should have uploaded all of this before. Yeah. Uh, I know, and you had a full hour and a half to get ready for this. What happened? I did, and I made videos and everything. I, I cut up stuff, too. Like, And you just didn't, know, man. didn't feel like uploading it? I just, uh, I didn't, I don't know. I didn't get to it. Uh, all right, uh, so, uh, and then I don't know if you want to talk about the second half much. It was not nothing too interesting in the second half. Maybe the substitutions you want to get into. Uh, NYCFC really, uh, I mean, they let us have the ball, really, in the second half, well, but we didn't do much with it. Like you said, they I started just, countering towards the end. I want to finish up by saying, so I wrote some notes. Go for Diego it. Was, Diego was in his bag with a beautiful through ball to Suarez in the 22nd minute, right, yep. from long distance. Taylor had a great cross to Suarez where he whiffed it, right? It was the one that he whiffed right in front of the goal on the 27th minute. And then the one thing that I picked up that I noted this down a couple times is that Gressel takes way too long to make a decision on what he's going to do. Like, he'll sit there, he'll hesitate, 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 wait until the last second when the defender's so close, try to make a play, and then it'll get stolen from him. I noticed that on at least four different occasions. Who was Gressel. that? Gressel? That Gressel, that he would take too long to make his decisions. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the ball in front of him, and instead of making a quick decision, he's waiting, he's waiting until the defender comes. I guess he's trying to figure out where he's coming from to, in, to dictate a better pass to someone else or something. I noticed that. And um, other than that, I also noticed Diego Gomez do a mota blast in the 40th minute. Oh, That's yeah. That, yeah that, that one hit, almost hit, uh, hit, hit my wife. Yes, that that one looked like it was gonna was sail. That one, was that one? One of those almost hit my wife. You got, um, you got. You should sue them. <laughs> and you know what, Florida man, I I'm actually working on my Diego Gomez apology letter, and I'm going to be writing it on top of my Taylor jersey picture thing here. So. Uh, and, and I saw Tank jumped in and, and decided to poo-poo on, ca <laughs> cal poo on calendar. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see calendar. From what I saw, I didn't think calendar had a bad game. I don't know what you think, Chris. I don't know what the chat thinks outside of Tank. I didn't think calendar had a bad game. I don't think he had a bad game. He had a lot of good blocks this game. He had a lot of good blocks this game. The only goal that he succeeded in reality was a goal that wasn't his fault. Greetings to hey. Puerto Rico. What's up? Nah, nah. But other than that, the second, the second half kind of sucked. 
very lackluster second half. And, um, I mean, we had opportunities in the second half, too. I mean, Luis Suarez has got to be beating himself up today, right? He's got to be few, beating himself up. He had a few opportunities, he had so many opportunities. He the, team, the team overall had a lot of opportunities, but they just couldn't convert, and that's okay. Look, this kid, Matt Freeze, had a great game. Yes, he did. So, you know, it happens. Now, what did you think about the, the Matt Freeze going ahead and – and and laying down on the ground and getting uh, Luis Suarez all all hap- uh, all excited and uh, upset. Well, you know how I feel about goalies. That guy's a bitch. Like, what are you doing? What a bitch! Okay. He all didn't right. even get hit in the head. He's just gonna sit on the ball. He's gonna be a little bitch. Get up! What are you well, doing? What I th- what I thought is that NYCFC was happy with the draw, and usually teams that are on the road are. But I felt like they they felt it also. Like, ooh, into Miami. Luis Suarez, they'll pull one out really late and and run, like completely just run away with this game, and yeah. I think that they were just all in for the draw at the, at the very end, and they started ten minutes early, and um and that that sucks because you know that that played to their favor even though they gave us nine extra minutes and when I like I told you earlier when I saw nine minutes I thought oh we're winning this game, yeah, I don't know I just thought that it was super unnecessary. I thought there was another time where there was like a substitution that was being made by NYCFC. The players were getting off on the other side of the field instead of to the closer side of the field to try to delay the game. Like they were being fucking bitches. Mm -hmm. Like NYCFC was being a bunch of bitches. Mm -hmm. Like you're so happy. You're going to walk away with your tie. You stupid fucking team. You suck. Well, I mean, they've only won one game all year, so they're trying to get points whenever they can. Yeah, I mean, Skyler's mentioning it right here. Even their fans are happy with the draw. And, and typically, you're happy with a draw in an away game. Mm-hmm. Well, that's because they've, they've done so poorly. So. Yeah. I'm, and they'll take any win. <laughs> they'll take any win. If you, give them, if you give them anything for half a point, they'll take a half a point. Look, if, if you're on a whatever game losing streak that they're on, I mean, all you, Fucking give me a point. Bottom feeders. Yeah. Well... Now that we're talking about NYCFC, so you did the show without me on Wednesday with the NYCFC yes. guest. Yeah. Now, I had a question for you. Yeah. Since when is Queens not a part of New York City? Bro, I never said that Queens <laughs> is not a part of I, Did I say you that? Did? I said yes, it verbatim? Yes. I was so, like, what the hell is this guy talking about? Maybe I didn't word it right. I thought that I said that there's people that complain because it wasn't in you know, Manhattan, the Bronx, or it wasn't in Brooklyn, you know, Queens. Queens Queens is one of those. It's a borough. I mean, yes, I know it's one of the five boroughs, yes. But from what I understood, it's not a preferred borough where they wanted the game at, where they wanted the stadium at. It's the same shit as Brooklyn and Bronx. It's the the same shit. I guess, but, (laughs) you know, I fucked up on that one, I guess. I'll take ownership of that. What the hell fuck Queens say? anyway. What the fuck else is in Queens? Nas is in nah. Queens. That's yeah. it. Nas is in Queens. Mob Deep is in Queens. You got Flushing. Fuck Flushing. Fuck the Mets. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm with you on that fuck, one. Fuck Train 7. Fuck you guys. Roosevelt Ave is there. There's a lot of Colombians out there. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I went out there. I went out there. I met all the Colombians out there. It was nice. Mm-hmm. Got me some yeah. fucking Colombian food, but fuck Queens. Yeah, and good then for real estate, and then shout out to Miami, the sixth borough. Funny, one world, one gold. And now, as you say that, you know, if, if you ever randomly see like any type of Photoshop picture on the internet and it has the sixth borough on it, that's mine. I used to use that for all my social medias for like the last 10 years, up until like two or three years ago. I literally just had the sixth borough on everything. And um, the way we started the battered fans website, we were, we were going to start a the Six Borough website. So, um, so uh, anything else you want to talk about this game before we start? Just I know we're going to talk about Monterrey on Monday. We have a guest yeah. for Monterrey on Monday. But yes. anything else you want to touch on before we slightly touch on Monterrey? Because I do want to talk about the Monterrey thing. I mean, look, it's the the game was what it was. It was a tie fucking game. It uh, you know it should have been a better outcome. We should have had more goals. We should have had a win. But I mean. If you're going to lose a game, I guess lose a game without Messi, right? You know, get, feed uh, all the Messi monsters. 
feed all the messy monsters, let them feel like Messi is, ah, we can't win without Messi, and that come Wednesday we're going to dominate because Messi decided to take a shit that morning, and then, you know, I, I'm probably going to get destroyed in the chat, guys. So, for sure. I mean, at um, this point, I've, I'm already stuck in the quicksand. What? Give me a positive from today. Uh, Cello was good. Okay. He was good. Bright was good. I like Cello and Bright. I love seeing Gomez and Ruiz back. There was a lot of, there's a lot more positives than you, than people probably think. I agree. And Alex Rivas is telling us that we're fucking cooked. What? Nah. Guys, you know what? Now that you asked that question, guys, Nate, put one name on the chat that you thought was a positive for this game. I told I mean, you so far, AZ Rebellion is mentioning Cello, Ruiz. I thought Luis you Suarez. Thought Luis Suarez. I, I thought Luis. I thought the way Luis Suarez was playing, at least in that first half, I thought Luis Suarez was having a great game. I thought he was creating for other people left and right. I thought he was having a great, he was a great, great game. Um, yeah, and feels like a loss right now for Marasovic. Uh, Gus is mentioning Cello. Mike V is also mentioning Cello. You got Gomez mentioned by by Michael. And Sophia. Timon in is mentioning Taylor. Mark Taylor, I thought was a little quiet today. He was okay. I thought he did pretty well. I mean, there was a time where he almost had one of his 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 Taylor blasts, but he ended up giving it up to he ended up giving it up to Gomez, and that's the one that he blew. Mm -hmm. Gomez yeah, is Chelito. always listen, and the the thing about Cello is that I think the I think that everything is seen positively because it's his first game and he didn't have a complete blunder. So I think that the fact that Wagan didn't have a terrible game already is like a sign of positivity at the right back position. Um, I saw Freire walking around before the game, like I told you, right? When I saw uh, Kremaki and, and yeah. Rondo. And of the three of them, Freire looked like he was walking normal. He looked like everything was good. Not what? I'm not saying that he's good, but do you think that there's a chance that he comes back on Wednesday? I would think so. I mean, I think from what I could tell, I feel like Tata has like a high opinion of him. So I think yeah. that he would come back if Kristoff, especially if Kristoff is not going to be here or okay. if Kristoff is injured in some way, he's definitely going to start. If we have a team with four in the back with uh, Wagon, Aviles, uh, yes, Okay, and, uh, yeah, uh, Tank, I was saying earlier that um, I also saw Redondo and Kremaki, and they were walking together. Um, and, yes, Redondo did not look good, but he just got injured. right? He's still eight weeks back away from getting back. Yeah. But if, if on Wednesday we have Alba, Alba, Freire, Aviles, and Wagon on our back line with Drake at goalie, and then in the midfield you have um, – I guess Gomez, Busquets, and David Ruiz with Taylor, uh -huh. with Taylor Suarez and Messi up top. You don't think that that's a that's a solid eleven? I think that's I a mean, beautiful eleven. I mean, I would rather have Redondo over Ruiz. Not that I, not that I didn't think Ruiz plays well, but I think Redondo. Just with what we have, I think Redondo. I think is better than Ruiz, honestly. But I think with that starting eleven, I I'm not. I don't think that we're like done or cooked as somebody said earlier i think that we have a chance i think that's a solid 11 especially when you say hey we have messy so uh, it is a know. pretty it, it's a really good 11 i mean mm -hmm. you're measuring david ruiz but that's only by default because redondo's injured if because redondo's not injured then he's filling that spot if everybody's healthy the only difference is redondo no mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's, that's the only it. one because Wagan is going to stick. That's it. Wagan is right back. Alba's left back. I mean, and, and everybody, you know everybody you, else Skyler. is solidified. I Skyler is right. I want to see David Ruiz, but Skyler's probably right. It probably won't be mm. David Ruiz. It'll probably be Gressel. Yeah, because Tata loves Gressel. Yes. So it'll probably be Gomez, Busquets, and Gressel. So, yes. Skyler, you are 100% right. It'll probably be Gressel in the, in the right center mid position. So. Wow, one world, one goal is chiming in with some heat, saying I think we'll have about five different starters on Wednesday: Messi, Freire, Negri, Ben Krem, etc. No, no way, Messi, yes, for in right right wing, Freire, yes, center back, 
but I don't see where Negri would fit. You're not going to bench uh, Jordi Alba in a Champions Cup game. Bankrem, I mean, are you really going to start him over David Ruiz and Gressel? I doubt it. I definitely don't think Tata would do that. So, no, I, I think that if Kres, uh, Kremaki plays, it will be as a sub. And, um, yeah, and I think David Ruiz might also come in as a sub. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Now, does this loss discourage you for Wednesday's game? No, it doesn't because we don't have Messi. Okay, what if Messi doesn't play on Wednesday? Then it's uh it's 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 gonna be a scary Wednesday. Then it's gonna be. I don't think we're gonna lose. I don't think we're cooked. But obviously, playing with Messi is gonna be better than not playing with Messi. But I think that will be fine. Monterrey hasn't lost since like September or something. Well, I mean, apparently they just recently lost. Oh, First really? loss okay. of the year. Oh, Mike v is okay. Mentioning it. There we go. That's what I like to hear. Good stuff, Mike V. And then we're gonna have yeah. to go back. So I, exactly. I'm not going to lose any confidence. Now, once – if I were to hear, oh, Messi might not play or Messi's not going to play, then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. But if Messi's playing, look, we don't lose when Messi plays. And Alejandro's saying we're not playing like a super team. God help us. So, so – and look, Kevin's saying they will this Wednesday. And Mike V is mentioning they had two red cards. Yeah, but that doesn't count for Champions Cup, so. Yeah, but then that means that basically they're going to get super angry at Luis Suarez because Luis Suarez pisses everybody off. I love, yeah, he does. So I know and he sure was getting spicy getting... with the NYCFC players. That's another thing from the last episode. When uh, when the guest was like, yeah, we like our players and our coaches to act like New Yorkers. Look, I'm a New Yorker. I promise you, there's pussies in New York also. Not everybody's fucking hard. So yeah. like just because you're from New York doesn't mean you're hard. Like, I'm sorry. There's this preppy neighborhoods. There's geeks. There's people that get beat up on a daily basis. Not everybody's fucking hard in New York. Yeah, this so. guy. I mean, they should build the stadium in Astoria, Queens, I guess. Preppy ass Astoria. Well, Astoria is not that preppy. There's parts it's, it's in Astoria big. that's. Yeah. No, it's Fuck gonna be fine, Flushy. I, I I saw that it was really nice. The the, the entrance and stuff. Yeah, of course. That shit looks beautiful. They could fit anything in fucking Queens. Mm -hmm. That's why they yeah, picked that borough. Well, it's the biggest borough, like. Yes, it is. So they have two fucking airports in that place. So I don't know, and and, and uh, Timonen is mentioning Greek food is tasty, though that is true. Oh, look, man, New York is the best place for me personally. Maybe I'm biased, but if you want to eat, go to New York. You get, you find literally a little bit of everything. Literally a little bit of everything. Yes, I think that's a foodie's dream is to go to New York. I read somewhere. That you could literally eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner at a different spot for man, was it like twenty or thirty years? Like every day, never repeat. If you go to New York City, like it's wild. So I'm sure a lot of those are going to be pizza spots, but it's like literally you can try a different place to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day for like twenty or thirty years or some crazy number. And um, well, so go ahead. Tank is saying that they have great pizza and public transportation. That's it. I mean, they have a little bit more than that, Tank, but I, oh, I look, get what you're saying. Hey, let's not disrespect New York either, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, right. it's, not, uh, it's not Boston. Oh, no, fuck Boston. All right, uh, Chris, we're, we're now off to the gas bagging part of the show, so I think we're just about done here. We are 3-2-2. Three, two, and two. three wins, two draws, two losses. Uh, we are technically still in the top end of the of the standings. I haven't checked the updated standings, but we've also have one more game than most other teams. So you really got to take that with a grain of salt. Um, we have 11 points. We are right behind Cincinnati. Has 12 points. We are on a three-way tie for second with 11 points. But like I said, we have one more game played than most of those teams. So that could change soon. Well, yeah, is he saying that we're second in the standings? So yeah, but we've played more games than everybody else. So I don't know. I, I, I try not to to get too yeah. hyped about second place until everybody's played the same amount of games. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm re I'm ready to watch. I'm ready to watch the game on Wednesday, Papa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wednesday, it definitely is going to be fun because those games matter, right? These regular season games technically matter, but you lose, you're like, ah, well, you lose some, you win some, you move on, but 
Wednesday, we can't lose, especially at home. We got to win this game. So yes, uh, it's going to be fun. Absolutely. And we have our guests coming on Monday to talk some Monterrey. Uh, he'll be joining us at 9 o'clock to talk Monterrey in English. And then he'll be joining us and the batter here on en Español at 10 o'clock to talk uh, Monterrey in Spanish. So it should be a fun Monday night. Uh, any final words there, Chris? It's coming, baby. The wall? Brick by brick. The wall. It's coming. Okay, guys. <laughs> I got it. Oh, actually, uh, sounds one, two, three on the TV. Supporters sounded great. I did think that the supporters section did sound louder than usual, which is really cool. I don't know yeah. what attributed to that. I don't know if there was just more of them today, but I did think that it was really cool. Hopefully, they could bring even more of that on Wednesday because it's going to be needed. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. So Wednesday for sure. And uh, if you haven't already, check out betterfans.com. If you want to get your Goat Messi shirt, and uh, I was getting a lot of compliments on it today. So if you want to get that shirt, go ahead, batterfans.com. And um, I think that's about it. When um, Wednesday, Monday, we'll be back 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock in Espanol. And um, I'll, I'll stop gas bagging. I hope everybody has a great Easter tomorrow. Enjoy yourselves, all that egg hunting and all that other good stuff. And for those of you that reached out to me throughout the week to check to see if everything was okay with me, I really appreciate you guys reaching out. That was really nice of you guys. And um, so far, everything is good. So we'll be back on Monday. So until the next one, have a good one.